about the smooth longboarding style of Devon Howard. So let's dive in. So before we dive into the video, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do. Also hit that notification bell below so that you get notified every single time we bring out a new Coach's Eye video. But let's dive into the longboarding style. This will be the first longboarder that we've done. Yeah, we've had a lot of guys eye. asking about longboarding. Mm -hmm. um, it's I have coached a few longboarders before and um, something that I enjoy doing. And there's certain techniques that are really similar, but others that are very different. Excellent. So let's jump so in. Let's, let's dive into it. Let's bring the iPad up onto the screen. So first of all, let's just watch a bit of it and let's get our froth on. So you'll notice that his back's fairly straight. Beautiful style. Oh, look uh, at that. It's like a little magic trick off the front a, of the board. A froth on that, hey. Okay, I, I want to stop and start talking here. Okay. Let, let's go back, please. I need to talk about this. That is picture perfect. It is. It okay. is so pretty amazing. The thing is, he is not moving his body much. The hands are super, super quiet. So think of a kid riding a bicycle. Mm. Um, if the handlebars are wobbly, he's got no control. But if the hands are quiet, he's got really, really good, smooth control. Um, absolutely love that. Little cheetah five on the nose. And the, the quieter the hands are, the quieter the board is. And you'll notice that a lot of pros, they don't move their hands much. Mm. Whereas beginners, they've just got arms flailing all over the place. So for me, the trim line, the hands, the style was fantastic. All right. You'll notice on the pop-up, he goes back foot, front foot, straight away, coffee cup arm up. All right, so it's his back arm over here that when he stands up, he brings that up. Now, the higher you raise your hands up, it tends to straighten your back and give you better balance. Mm. If you keep your hands low, it tends to bend your back and make you fall over. So a question here, yeah. obviously a lot of the analysis that we've done in the past has been on people that are riding shortboards. Is there any difference in the pop-up with a longboard versus a shortboard? Okay, so with the longboard, you can get in earlier. So the takeoffs are never going to be as steep. Okay. Now the idea behind it is because your longboard can't fit into the curve of the wave, so if I did a drawing here, a shortboard could fit in there, but a longboard would probably nosedive. Mm. So they need to get in earlier and actually turn the longboard to trim and fit into that wave better. Yeah. So that's really important. All right, now here's something that's really, really important, is when they're going along the wave, oh, that's it. Look at the stacking. What, 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 Look at what, that. What, that. What, what, oh, okay, stacking. I was like, what, what, what was it? What did I miss? It looks like he's doing nothing, but he's got his back straight. Okay, and his balance is on point. Now you'll notice he doesn't have a wide style. Mm. He's got a very narrow stance. Yeah. So the narrower the stance is, the straight to the back is, the better your balance is. Now, in longboarding, if you've got a very wide style, you're going to struggle to move the board. But by having your feet close together, you're able to take really small steps, not messing with your balance. Mm. So whenever you do walk, and watch the crossovers, it's a tiny step. It's a tiny step. So is is is, is the crossover of the legs, is that a style thing? Because yes. mean, I'm not... So when you cross over, you're almost facing frontwards. Mm. But if you were side on, you'd have to shuffle down the deck of the board. Okay. So by being a bit more front on, you're able to walk easier. Okay, so, so when I've gone out on a longer board in the past, and I've tried to sort of move up and down the board, I haven't done the crossover. I've found myself shimmying up and well, down the board. So is that, does that mean I'm probably side on? So let's look at this guy in the, in the front. So see how he's a bit side on, jamming on the back foot, and he's got very little sort of style and technique, and it doesn't look as great. Okay? But if you watch this turn here, okay, he steps back on the tail, he drops the knee, and he's got this real soft, easy turn. Mm. Whereas the guy before, he, he extended his body. So let's go back to this old mate. Um, 
Watch the guy before. So look at the tension on his board over there. Yep. Okay. So the turn doesn't look as good, but over here, the softening of the knees, you get the control over the turn. Yeah. So when you drop the knee, you tend to open the hip and you are able to twist better. But when you push, you lock everything and you aren't able to twist. So the control over the turn wasn't there. Mm. And I, I, I know that um, when obviously we're reviewing, we're reviewing short borders, there's a lot more, you talk a lot more about stacking on the front foot. It seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me here like, like uh, Devon Howard is, is using the back foot quite a lot to pivot yes. forward because of the length. So is that more of a One, thing in longboarding? 100%, you have to stand on the tail to lift the nose up to get a direction change. Okay. But because the boards are flat and because the boards are long, they plane better and they maintain their speed throughout right. the turn. If you did that on a short board, you'd tend to lose speed really quick and you'd struggle to get the speed back. Yep. Now, I want to bring your attention, look at Devon's back arm. It's head high. Yeah. So somebody dancing a waltz by raising their hands up would be lighter on their feet. So having that hand up gives him balance, but also makes him lighter on the feet so he can walk better. And you'll notice that hand is about shoulder high and he keeps it level and the board doesn't wobble. So the quieter the hands yeah. are, the more control you get. The straighter the back is and the narrower the feet are together, the better your balance is going to be. Okay. And the easier it is to maneuver along that board. Okay, now a question which uh, I think would probably be in a lot of people's minds. If it's not, then it's definitely in mine, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask it anyway. How does it work that you can stand on the front of the board and it still tracks along? Like that, 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 that tail stays in the water. What is the side? What, what, is, what, what, what magic is happening to make uh, that happen? Okay, so imagine this. First of all, he, he's got a, a big single fin over here, mm -hmm. keeping his line. Yep. So if he had, a, say, a thruster with small fins, the tail might pop out. So the big single fin actually anchors that tail in. Okay. Right. And also in the back half of the board, that board won't have any edge in it because edge releases your tail and makes the board slide. Right. So he'll have soft rails in that long board right through to the back half of the board. Okay. Okay. You'll probably also find he's got a concave under the nose area. So when he stands on it, water hits that concave and gives it a bit of lift. And you'll probably have a, a flatter, wider nose area. Um, what actually happens is the tail of the board sits inside of the tube and it can't lift up because of the roof of the tube keeping it there. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty crazy because obviously like, he's a, he's a guy, he's, he's going to be, if you're going in kilos, I imagine he's probably around that, that, that sort of yeah. 85, so, 90 kilo mark. That's a lot of weight pushing on the front of that board. Yeah, but he's also riding a log that weighs a lot. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is how does he steer from up there? What does he do? All he does is he points his knees. So whatever direction he points the knees in, that's the line that he's going to take. Same way when you skateboarded and you pointed your knees, mm. similar principle. So let's watch if he does any steering here. So he goes along, look at where he points the knees there. That's the line he's trimming on. Do you yeah. see that? So he physically points the knees and he gets that line. <laughs> Looks so cool. Look at that. Real stylish. And what you'll notice is that his joints are nicely stacked all above each other. So he's got this great balance. Mm. As opposed to someone whose joints are sort of um, maybe a bit sort of bent over. Yeah. And then they won't have great balance. And then there's no tension in the body. Look at the hands. The hands are soft. Almost like he's holding two cups of coffee and he's not spilling the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. So I mean, there, it seems that there's, there's so many crossovers from shortboarding. I think the only one that I've really found that's a big difference is that standing on the back foot to lift the board up to move it round. But otherwise, every, everything else seems to be very similar to what we, what we do on, on smaller boards. I did want to show you something, if I can just find it. So on the bottom turn, he's doing a lean, yep. really sim similar to shortboarding. But to come up the wave, he actually extends. So I'd like to show you. So he's on the board. He compresses to go down, so he accelerates and then extends to go up. Oh, yeah. And he compresses to go down and extends to go up. So do you see well, he wants to seem wee. Yeah. That's the same as being on a trampoline. You yeah. compress at the bottom and you extend to go up. Yeah. So the compression and extension is the exact same as shortboarding. 
The only difference is to make a tighter turn, he will stand all his weight on the back of the board to make it pivot. Yeah, and so in terms of actually riding the board, he stood, looks like he stood in the middle most of the time. Obviously, w- well, when he knows rides, he's up at the front, when he turns, he comes to the back, but his, I suppose his neutral position. That- Let's call it his trim line. Yeah. He stands and balances in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think- and you'll notice his stance is very narrow, except for when he's trying to turn, he'll take a big step back put pressure on the back foot to turn. And so what, if we look here, I'm just kind of just- And you'll notice it's a drop knee turn. See the yeah. knees bent. But then as soon as he has turned, that back leg moves really quick back up to the middle. Yeah, it's just, it's just it's like, a step forward. Yes, yeah, so it's like turn, finish, done, so back up. And then totally relaxed and stacking. And then, but then whoop, stack back on the front. And look at, front look at the hand there. positioning. Oh, I love this. Okay, so if he was driving a car, he turns. Oh, he's, it's like a steering wheel. Exactly. So it's just like steering a car. I want to turn right, bang. And then I want to trim along the wave. Then if he wanted to turn left, the hands would change. Well, I, what, so, so what, what I found pretty interesting there was as he came up, as he came up. Just leveled out the hands again. Not only did he level out the hands, but he was, as he was rising, he was physically walking up the board at the same time that the board was rising. It's always easier to walk going up because it's a lot more stable and the water moves slower on the up. Whereas when you're going down, you accelerate, makes it so much harder to walk on the downs. Ah. You always want to walk on the up. I think there's a, oh, whiz, whiz around somebody there. I mean, uh, for a long while, I think that's quite a, oh, just missed him. Beautiful lines, nothing's oh. rushed. So that's. It's the coffee cup pass. Yeah. So yeah, he's still on the back foot. I'm, I'm interested to see when he when his back foot. He steps forward, but he's almost gone just dead up straight there. He's waiting for the wave to mm. regroup to get the energy back, and when he feels the energy, then he'll lean into the bottom turn. Look how tall he stood. That's how you get your balance. That's how you make yourself light. Then he softens on yeah. the down. Absolutely beautiful technique. Beautiful surfing. Coffee cup passing. Oh, here we go. This is the clip I was looking for. Push. A oh. little bit of a... Uh... <laughs> so the, the downside to the longboards is they don't turn well. No. So whenever you drop in on a longboarder, expect this to happen. Donk. So a little bit of a love tap, followed by, <laughs> are you all right, buddy? And then... Uh... Straight into some body surfing. But yeah, amazing. Oh, and I think it's fin... Yeah. yeah. It's fin, fin falls out afterwards so that was probably a different type of nose ride but it was good yeah so hopefully you found the uh let me, let me bring us back up again hopefully you found the, the 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 breakdown of devon howard and the longboarding interesting it is it is the first time that, that we've done a longboarder in this series if you'd like us to do some more longboarders and just comment longboarder down below and we'll and give, give us some names as well as to who you'd like us to break down in that longboarding world and we'll we'll uh, endeavor to 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 put some more longboarders into the coach's eye But we'll see you in the next edition of Coaches. I hope that you enjoyed it. Until then, get out there, do some surfing, have some fun.